Okay, so today we're having a look at something called the chelate effect. And the word chelate uh, comes from uh, a Greek word, chelos, uh, oh sorry, chile, which it means claw, and it will become clear why we mean that in a moment. Um, and it allows us to tie together our work on um, uh, entropy or thermodynamics and also transition metals. So that's basically what we've been working towards with, with, with our two different topics. So um, let's first of all think about um, reminding ourselves about a, a, a simple transition metal complex. So if I were to dissolve aqueous copper two, uh, sorry, copper two plus ions in water, then they would form this complex. So we've got six water ligands that have been uh, dative covalently bonded or coordinate bonded uh, to the copper two plus ion. So I've drawn that one quite badly there, but um, it should be um, in an octahedral geometry. Uh, so if we were to think about a bond angle between those, then we'd be looking at 90 degrees. Um, if we think about um, a bidentate ligand, so the bidentate ligand we're going to think about is going to be the ethane dioate ligand. And that looks like that. Now, remember, this is a bidentate ligand, which means that each ligand is able to form two dative covalent bonds to the transition metal ion. So if we were to react this complex with an excess, so three and at least three times or three equivalents, uh, the amount of ethane dioate, then what we would form is this complex. So remember, just as a way of us reminding ourselves how to draw these bidentate ligand structures, then the first thing I'm going to do is just draw the oxygen atoms that form the dative covalent bonds, like this. And then I'm going to draw the rest of the structure in for each of them. So that's negatively charged there. OK, and very importantly, for the chelate effect, uh, we have produced six water molecules. So if we just review what we've done there. We've taken our um, transition metal complex, which is a couple with six water ligands, dative covalently bonded to it. And we've reacted it with three times or three equivalents uh, of ethane dioate. That's produced this complex here and six water ligands. If I were to write this out underneath, then we'd have Cu H2O six times two plus plus three C2O four two minuses goes to make this complex here three times. So the charge on this complex is going to be made up uh, of the two plus and the three two minus ions, which means that it's a four minus overall, and six H2Os. Now, very importantly, in terms of the number of species, so the number of um, uh, molecules or complexes, um, this is one species, and we've got three of these species. So there are four distinct species uh, over here. If we have a look at them the, in the products, We've got this counts as one species, and we've got six water molecules. So in total, we've got seven species. So we've gone from four species to seven species. Let's think about why that is important. So um, let's go back to our understanding of Gibbs free energy. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. That's the Gibbs free energy. If Gibbs free energy is less than zero, then a reaction can be spontaneous or can occur um, at that given temperature. Delta H is the enthalpy change. T is the temperature. And we're going to assume that's a constant because we're doing this at room temperature. And delta S is the entropy. So let's think about delta H first of all. 
So delta H is going to be made up of the um, uh, sum of the bond energies in the reactants. Take away the sum of the bond enthalpies in the product. So in terms of this uh, particular reaction, if we actually have a look at what's happening, um, we're breaking six oxygen to copper bonds and we're making six oxygen to copper bonds. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So all these six are being broken and then these six are being made. There's obviously going to be some diff slight difference in the um, entropies, sorry, the enthalpies of the oxygen to copper bonds here because of the, the, the rest of the structure, but it's going to be minimal. So we can actually say that in this case, because the bond enthalpies of the reactants of the bond enthalpies of the products are approximately the same, we can say that delta H is approximately equal to zero. So therefore, if we rewrite our equation, delta G equals zero minus T delta S, then in fact, the the part of this equation that is important to us, assuming temperature is a constant, because we're going to be doing this at room temperature, and we're not going to worry about the temp changing the temperature, then actually delta S is the only important part of this uh, process, uh, of, the, of this equation for us in the reaction that we're thinking about. Now, if we have a look at what's happened, we've gone from four species to seven species. That's a significant increase in entropy. So delta S is positive. Because our equation is minus T delta S, then because there's a large delta S, because we've gone from four species to seven species, then delta G is likely to be negative, very negative. So in fact, this reaction is likely to be spontaneous at any, at any given temperature. So let's summarize that. And, and we'll have a look at an, another example. So let's have a look at the reaction of our hexa aqua copper species, this time with EDTA. Now remember, one EDTA molecule can form six dative covalent bonds. So that EDTA molecule is going to displace or substitute all six water ligands. The charge on this complex is going to be two minus. Uh, the reason being two plus for the copper, four minus for the EDTA. So if we have a look here, in this case, we've got one species and one species. So two species in the reactants and seven species in the product. So in this case, there is a huge increase in entropy. And the reason we've gone from two species to seven species. So the increase in entropy is huge, which means that delta G is going to be negative at a get any given temperature. So let's think about what we mean by the chelate effect. Now the chelate effect involves multidentate ligands monodentate ligands. That means a increase in the number of species, in this case in the products, therefore a large delta S, which means that a uh, delta G is going to be less than zero. Um, we also need to know that delta H in, in these reactions is approximately zero. The reason being, uh, it, we're generally substituting, uh, uh, so it was generally substituting So because we're often substituting 
oxygen to transition metal bonds or nitrogen to transition metal bonds with oxygen or nitrogen to transition metal bonds, the uh, enthalpy, uh, ent enthalpy change is going to be approximately equal to zero. So the chelate effect is where we are using multidentate ligands to substitute uh, multidentate ligands to substitute monodentate ligands. Um, and that means that these reactions are very, very likely to proceed. There is a high thermodynamic Okay, so there's a very high thermodynamic drive for the substitution of monodentate ligands by multidentate ligands, and that is the chelate effect. The best example of which is this one here at the top. So EDTA is an extremely powerful uh, chelating ligand. It, it will substitute almost any other ligand because we are going from a smaller number of species to a larger number of species in the reaction, which means we have a large increase in entropy and a large increase in entropy assuming enthalpy is approximately equal to zero means that the reaction is spontaneous or, or, or can occur at most temperatures thank you very much